Hey guys, one of the most difficult parts of cookery is plating up the final product. People ask me for help all the time, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Callie Blunt, a professional food stylist, however, knows exactly what she's doing. Callie, what are we getting into today? We're going to take some beautifully made home cooked dishes and elevate them. I'm going to show you how to make them look absolutely beautiful for the people that you love at home. Sounds good. Let's get down to basics. So plating up food is a huge challenge, especially for newcomers to the yes, kitchen. What, what, do you have any advice to people who just want to improve the presentation of their food a little bit? Great question. So one thing I love about plating food is you really are just telling a story of the food that you're making. So for example, with steak, I mean, what do you think about when you think of steak? You think of something that's hot and sizzling and you know beautifully seasoned. Maybe you see some flaky salt and some juices on it. Those are the flavor cues that we really want to highlight when we're plating the dish. So we'll use contrasting color with a beautiful green chimichurri sauce, a beautiful red sauce, or we could use flaky salt and coarse ground pepper to highlight texture, all those fun things. Is there any cilantro in the chimichurri sauce? I got you covered, man. We're using parsley. I heard okay. you didn't like it. We're not doing it. Thank you for taking that into consideration. You're welcome. What else are we going to get into besides steak today? Yes, we're going to do steak. We're going to do a beautiful uh, baked potato soup. We're going to do some uh, melty cheese on top, some crispy bacon, a little bit of extra credit with some fried potato skins on there for another little texture cue. And then we're also going to do some beautiful, fresh marinara pasta with basil and shaved parmesan. Train magnifique. All right, uh, then let's get started, shall we? Let's do it. First up, creamy potato soup. We start by peeling and dicing two pounds of russet potatoes, saving the skins for a little surprise you'll see in just a bit. Once the potatoes are chopped, we're melting two tablespoons of butter in a large pot over medium heat, to which we'll add the bottom ends of one bunch of chopped scallions, saving the green tops for later. Once those begin to soften, add the potatoes, one quart of whole milk, bring the whole affair to a boil, and reduce to a simmer for around 15 minutes or until the potatoes are tender. While the soup simmers, the skins come back into the picture. We're frying the potato skins and olive oil to make a crispy topping for our soup that will add texture you can both see with your eyes and feel with your mouth or hands if you don't own a spoon. Once those are crispy and golden brown, fish them out and let them drain on a paper towel. Our peels are prepared and our soup has simmered and it's ready to blitz with an immersion blender. Don't make it too, too smooth. We still want some whole chunks of potato in there for texture. And like any proper loaded baked potato, it's time to add half a cup of sour cream, cheese, and a generous pinch of kosher salt. Stir everything together until well incorporated, at which point it's time to let Callie build a beautiful bowl of this stuff. Shall I? You shall, Andrew, mm -hmm. you shall. You know, a good tip about plating soup, you don't want to overfill your bowl so that the soup is right at the rim of the bowl and people are spilling soup everywhere. You want to leave a little room for people to dunk in, dunk some bread, all that fun stuff. Well, I would a go more? a little bit more. Beautiful, yeah. Right. And uh, I yeah, space. I, I think that we can agree that that's not very Instagrammable, right. very tasty. Absolutely. But if I saw that on Instagram, I'd be like, why are you posting prison food? Right. Let's it not put like... that part in. Let's leave that out. Uh, why are you posting? Uh, you know, a 1920s <laughs> yes. orphan novel food. Yes. Can I have some more, please? No, this is beautiful potato soup. The taste's so good, but right now looking at it, it's not giving us the flavor cues and it's not making us think that it's delicious. It looks sort of just like potato puree. But see, what I love about what Andrew did there is we have some chunks of potato floating in the soup. And really when you plate soup, you want to give ingredient cues. And so that someone immediately knows this is potato soup, we're already seeing some pieces of potato in the top. And that's really why we didn't puree the whole thing into oblivion, because I want the chunks of potato in there to read as potato soup. And we can throw a couple of chunks yes, in there. Yes, it's perfect. Yeah. Make sure we see a little texture see there. See in the chunks. Second soup cue is the loaded baked potato soup. So of course we're gonna have cheese. And when I put cheese on top, I like this orange cheese because it's a good color contrast with this co with the beige color. I put it on bottom so that it melts into the soup so it reads as warm and comforting and it doesn't look cold. It's like here? Yes, How's it's that? pretty, it's Same pretty, one? yeah. Good. It's like a little nest of cheese. If you put the cheese on bottom with the hot soup, the cheese melts into the sides which looks really pretty and just makes people wanna dive in. So we have our cheese. And the next thing we're gonna put on here is bacon. And what I like to do 
is kind of just use my hands and tear pieces off. Mm -hmm. And these curly ridges on the top look really pretty, kind of stacked in the cheese. The way we got these curly ridges is by fanning the bacon out on the baking sheet. Mm -hmm. So I didn't just lay it flat, I made little crinkles in the bacon so that when it baked it was really pretty and wavy. And I think this kind of bacon looks so much more natural and delicious than if we had just put like bacon bits from a can and just plopped it on top. Sure. Yeah, I like these uh, brown bits here. Yeah, like, get some. Color, you know? Do it, yeah, I love it. You know, as much bacon as you want to give people, be generous, you know? Yeah, be, be a good person. Be, <laughs> don't, don't, don't short give, them on the bacon. Yeah? Give the people some pork, okay. So probably what I'm gonna do next is sour cream. So the sour cream can kind of melt into the soup a little bit so it reads as warm too. So typically what I do is just kind of smooth it out, kind of create little pretty waves in it and then kind of scoop up like that. So see how I had that little ridge and I just scooped up the ridge? Looks like And then cream. I'm just gonna, yeah, just put it on top. Gorgeous. Nice. And sometimes I'll just do a little extra swoops in it, like just to add a little extra texture. So we're not just putting like a blob. It looks more like it's textured. Yeah. That's pretty. Next up is potato the skins. pretty potato skins. Yeah. Right. Love the texture that these add. I love that they're salty and crisp. Yeah, just place them on top however you like. I kind of even like seeing this little edge, you know, the little edge of the skin. Yeah. So maybe kind of just, you know, poking them up. That's pretty. Um, and maybe even having a little extra piece kind of dipped into the soup is nice too. And then the last thing that every baked potato needs is scallions or chives. Of course. We have the green parts of the scallions we chopped earlier. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is kind of just, you don't want to cover it all up, but just kind of lightly scatter. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. These look beautiful. And then if you want to finish with like a little extra flaky salt, I think some cracked pepper would be beautiful. That's perfect. So we're just gonna lightly just add a little texture. See how that adds just a little bit? Now that, I'm that very is beautiful. <laughs> ready and willing to put on Yes. That's nice. How much better is that than uh, the first iteration? So much where it was better. Just a flat layer just a of just flat, whitish. Right, just a cream. Yeah. Mass. Well, should we eat it? <laughs> I think we should yeah, eat cool. it. Yeah, for sure. Good. All right, cheers, man. That tastes as good as it looks. Oh. Mm hmm. We have conquered the world of soup. What's next? Spaghetti. More specifically, boxed pasta and jarred sauce. Routes prove that you can turn these pantry items into something that looks and tastes fabulous. First, we start by boiling one pound of spaghetti and draining it a few minutes shy of the package directions so we can finish it in the sauce. Meanwhile, we're gonna simply saute some colorful cherry tomatoes and a little bit of olive oil until they're literally bursting with flavor, or just bursting. Once the tomatoes are cooked, they go into a large saute pan over medium heat with a big glug of your favorite marinara sauce and the al dente pasta. Stir it all together, add a splash of reserved pasta cooking water, and cook for one to two minutes until the sauce is cohesive and emulsified and bristling with color and flavor. At this point, you can add a big old pat of butter for flavor bonus points. Then we're gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and then it's time to style and serve. So the way that I like to plate pasta is to do it a little bit by a little bit and build it. So I'll kind of put it in strategically into the bowl, maybe twirl it a little with my tongs here, and then we're gonna go in with this meat fork and we're gonna make some big twirls. I see, so kind I see of making okay. yeah, well, little rhythmic sweet. shapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So we kind of have these little mounds, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use this, which is a tip you taught me, which I love, <laughs> makes kind of some bigger twirls. Oh, see, this is brilliant. Twirling after the fact. After the fact, whenever, make little bunches. Whenever yeah. I plate, I always twirl and then put it in the plate, and it's oh, such a challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is a great idea. Yeah, so you twirl in after the fact to make some really pretty little mountains of pasta. See how that kind of creates a pretty shape, yeah. and kind of creating those little knots. Yeah is nice. Oh, it's so pretty. And then we're gonna add the tomatoes on top so we can read that tomato flavor in the recipe as well. And I kind of put the tomatoes in little pockets, wherever it feels like it wants to be at home. And I love that we did different colors too. Like, you don't have to just do red, your classic red cherry, you know, tomatoes. You could yeah. do yellow, you could do purple, you could do, sometimes they're kind of a lighter green shade. Yeah. It's perfect. Some basil on Yeah, get your basil on. What do you think about this guy for the center? That looks awesome. Look at that pop of green with the red and the brown. Oh, yeah, you wanna do a little one on the corner? More. Yeah, do it. Just cause on camera it looks a little naked over there. About right there. That there. looks great. So Better just like looking. we did the tomatoes, you're evening out. Yeah. The herbs on top. There that looks go. beautiful. Looks lovely. And then we're just gonna add a couple of like strands of cheese. Oh, kind yeah. of these chunkier pieces. Mm -hmm. nice. Oh snap. That's oh snap. That was a long one. Kind of twirly guys. We're, we're being Let's just go for it. Let's not. Uh, and I like a little crushed red pepper on mine, so I might add some of that if we have some. some. I got some. This took five minutes more than just 
slapping it together. Mm -hmm. And instead we got something that I'd be very proud to mm -hmm. serve to my friends and family. Absolutely, me too. And to us, because I'll eat it right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm gonna eat some, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I'm kind of scared that I could eat this whole thing by myself. Like if I sat down for a second, that would really happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, unfortunately I do. <clears throat> you know what I think we need now? Some red meat. Yeah, we've been um, pretty carb and cheese heavy. We have, <laughs> we've done a lot of potatoes and a lot of pasta. So let's do a little bit of meat, shall Let's we? do a little meat, All I can't right. wait. We're gonna start with two beef tenderloins that we're gonna season liberally with both kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. Then we're gonna set those aside to rest while we contend with our supporting players. First, some tricolor fingerling potatoes that we're gonna simply have lengthwise, toss with a little bit of olive oil, kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, and roast at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes until they've picked up some nice color and are fork tender. Next up, an interesting twist on chimichurri sauce. Into a food processor goes one bunch of parsley stems removed. Removed. You can, of course, use cilantro if that's your bag, but Callie knows about my aversion to the green soap, and she was kind enough to bring parsley. We're then adding an avocado to the mix, which is going to aid in both flavor and creaminess. It also makes this sauce vegan-friendly, even though we're making a steak. Complete the sauce with the juice of one lime, a clove of garlic, and season to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. Then, while the food processor is running, we're going to slowly add a few tablespoons of olive oil in a slow, steady stream, which is going to help the sauce emulsify. Scrape down the sides as necessary, taste for seasoning, and we're almost ready to rock, but first we gotta make some compound butter, aka butter with stuff in it. In this case, a small bunch of parsley, stems removed and finely chopped, one minced clove of garlic, a pinch of kosher salt, added to one stick of room temperature unsalted butter, mashed together until a homogenous, flavorful mosaic. Now, time for my favorite part, cooking the steaks. We are generously lubricating a pan with vegetable oil and getting it screaming hot, to the point where there's little wisps of smoke coming off the oil. Add the steaks, sear on each side for two to three minutes, and then optionally baste with butter. To learn more about this process, go check out my episode of Basics on Steak. Once the steaks are nicely basted, we're throwing them in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven until they reach an internal temp of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Let them rest for at least 10 minutes under foil before styling and serving. Let's do it. Awesome, okay, so I'm gonna start out with our sauce, and I'm just gonna put a generous, I'm thinking I want the, the steak front and center, you know, and people, get the steak, I want them to see it first. Sure. And so we can just put this steak right there on top of the sauce. Right. You pick which one you want. Gorgeous, and you can kind of see that green around Plus, it. Um, that and looks then, so nice. Doesn't that look great? Even just as is, that looks Yes, great. and then we're gonna add the compound butter on top. And I like just to do a little bit of a gourmet dollop there. Maybe and then kind of let it, sea salt? yes. My and then kind of let it melt in. So we're gonna add our roasted potatoes and the green salad on the side. So these are fingerling potatoes, which have really interesting shapes and colors. I love that we have the dark, deep purple, that kind of lighter blush purple, and then also the golden um, brown of the yellow potatoes. It looks so good. And then we're gonna finish it off with a green salad. So if you wanna add some greens for me, but you don't wanna overwhelm the steak. So when you plate this, just think about, you don't want your salad greens to be taller than the steak to where they're like a mountain of greens. Keep them. Um, Too much? That's, no, that's pretty. That's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm gonna add some really baby little cherry tomatoes here. So this looks great, and I would, you could even add some more pepper, salt on top like you did earlier, salt and pepper to the salad. It looks beautiful. Looks gorgeous. Yeah. That's a nice little steak. Mm. And I think we can eat this one now. I think we can eat this yeah. one now. I think we should definitely try but and eat this one now. Really quite good. You got richness from the butter. Mm. You got acid from the um, mm -hmm. chimichurri. It's uh, well done. Well, Mom. sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that joke out there. There you go. Callie, thank you yes. so much for showing us some really practical tips on how to make our food a little bit prettier. Any uh, closing thoughts for the people at home that want to make their food look a little nicer? You know, you can do this. This is all very simple. It takes just an extra five, ten minutes to make your food look beautiful. And I promise you, eat with your eyes first. You're really going to love it. That's the expression I was looking for. You eat with your eyes first. You do. Absolutely. Makes your food taste even better. Until next time. <laughs> bon appetit. That's the other show. Oh my goodness. These dishes look great and they taste even better. We eat with our eyes first, after all, so paying a little extra attention to the presentation of your food can work wonders. If you're interested in seeing more from Callie, she has her own YouTube show all about beautifying food called Plate It Perfect. Just click the link in the video's description to check it out.